Hello everyone, welcome to my session. In this session I'm going to talk about server-side rendering. And for that I'm going to use CAP to render UI5 views and yeah, show them in a UI5 application. Um, what, do I mean, what do I mean with rendering? I'm not going to fully render the HTML. What I'm going to do is populate data. So to be very honest, it's not a real server-side rendering. It's actually populating the data. And UI5 will still take care of the rendering. You could see there's a populating data or pre-rendering or some kind of a hybrid rendering solution. Um, and yeah, why would you need this? I just wanted to try something out and it was just super cool to do, but it could be useful when it comes down to security uh, reasons. In case of security, you don't want to expose the OData uh, service. Um, this could help. Um, in this case, you will only expose files with the data in XML format. Um, it's also exposing the data, but a bit more secure. Um, they cannot just manipulate the data from in the debugging tools um, and not change it. Probably they will also be able to do it because the rendering still happens on the UI side, but it makes it already a bit harder. Another aspect could be performance, but it might also complicate things because you need to build in caching and so on. Um, nevertheless, um, it could be interesting depending on the use case. Um, and I showed this at um, Recap. I also showed this last year at Devtoberfest, and I will repeat it again and show the steps on how to do this. Um, just to show you how it works and maybe it inspires you but also because I added something additional uh, which I will keep um, till the end um, and therefore server-side rendering is key for this next step um, but first I will show you how it works and it actually comes with two plugins uh, one plugin one library a plugin for CAP and a library for UI5 um, the plugin will um, yeah, use, yeah, get the files, um, get the data and use handlebars to put the data into the files and send it to the UI. UI5 will then, instead of routing, will just load the different endpoints. But let me show you. I already have like, um, yeah, on the left side you see the plugin, but I have um, a new terminal open, I will create a new project, a new CAP project to generate, um, uh, to show how the plugin works. So I can, forgot to see at the beginning, I will generate a new demo application um, for CAP with Node.js, a tiny sample, a SQLite, the SQL database, and so on. All right, I navigate into this folder, run npm e, um, once it's, everything is installed, I will also open uh, open it in my um, Visual Studio Code. I don't need the agent. I will zoom in so you can see clearly what I'm doing. Um, yeah, the app folder is empty. There is a DP, there is a schema, just a basic book data. There is a service and I can now um, run npm start just to show you the result it's just a basic app application we have books we have mock data that's what i wanted to show now next step and i have a script to help me with this um, i'm going to install the plugin so you don't see me typing all the time so the plugin is ui5 cap server side rendering plugin. It's on, pub on npm, public npm, so you can just install it in your project. Once this in, is in your project, um, we can uh, start adding the views and in the SRV folder, I'm going to create a folder of views and I already prepared the views, so I'm going to just move them. Sorry for that into the views folder and how do they look it's basically an xml view an xml templating and instead of bindings i'm using handlebars because yeah 
I cannot put all the full data in there. I need to have something to put the big data in there. So handlebars makes handlebar makes the most sense. It's easy to to use here in the view. It's also easy to replace afterwards. Same for the view. Just a simple form, and here I use handlebars again to show it. Now the next step. Back to my steps. I'm going to enable server-side rendering. To enable server-side rendering, I go to my schema and I'm going to use the plugin. To be more precise, I'm going to use the aspect of the plugin. Aspect is server-side rendering and this aspect comes with additional properties. Additional properties that are needed to enable the server-side rendering. Properties like content, content type and so on that we use um, that we use to enable this feature. Next to it, we can also add configuration. One of the configuration properties is the type of server-side rendering. We can um, expose it as a view or as fragment. So I put it here, view. We also made sure that we can use shortcuts like SSR type, but I still prefer the long name. Um, so with that, let me check, it should be in there. So if I run now the application, we still have not a web application, we just have an OData service with books. But now what we can do, if I say like key one slash content, I should not use double quotes. This downloads me a file. And if you look in the file, it is the form with the details. And it contains now the values, like the title and the ID. You can see it in here. So the next step is adding a UI5 application. I'm going to stop the server now going to open the Fury generator and we will use the basic generator uh, because it's a freestyle app we need uh, I can select a cap project it will find my cap project look for the OData data service find the catalog service and we can go to the next step my main view but I will delete it is main I call um, Demo, I call it the application name demo, namespace b.wl, and yeah, I just keep it as it is, just demo purpose. This will generate me an application in the app folder um, with the app, app, um, the view. The view I'm going to delete as I don't need it. Um, the controller, we still need to have the controller. Um, because yeah, the, that runs on the UI side still um, and it's nothing to do with populating the data so we still need it here. Maybe in the next step we could also bring it um, to the server side but for now let's, let's keep it here. Um, I need to check one thing um, in the list here we still make the link BWL demo controller the namespace is correct I'm using the same namespace so that's fine that this does exist. Alright, if I go back to my script, um, I will now install the library. So I navigate into the app folder, demo, and then install the library because it's also npm, I can just plug it in. And basically the library has an extension of the router and route object because I implemented my own router. Um, because we will not navigate to targets, we will just navigate to endpoints. And I will add those um, to in the manifest. So in the manifest, I go to the routing section and I replace the M routing router with my own router, server side router. I also delete all the targets, we don't use the targets. But instead, we use routes. And I will explain right away what the routes are doing. So I put them in here. 
So we have a route for the list. The pattern is like always. I mean, the list, we just give it a name. The same for detail, although the pattern has here the ID. So we know the key that we are navigating to. But instead of navigating to a target, we navigate to an endpoint. And the endpoint contains our raw data service, the entity. And yeah, for detail, it contains the key slash content to download the XML view. Now for the list, yeah, we don't have a key, but we always need a key to be able to navigate the content. So we keep and use an empty key. We actually misuse it. But that's the way we are able to make it work. Ah, that's navigation. In the controller, we also need to add, um, yeah, to handle the selection. I put it in, but I still need to add something. The router needs to change to UI component dot get router and we need to edit here as well so we use the UI component get router to do the navigation that's still happening here um, we also change the index we keep this as it is but I'm going to add um, some the library to the resource roots so it's able to resolve um, the library in UI file.yaml, I'm going to disable the proxy because um, I will enable the UI5 um, libraries by adding them here. That's needed to find my library because I'm using NPM. This is the way to go when we are working with NPM. Oh, I go two levels up. Before I run start, I will run an npm install just to make sure that everything is installed, what was in the generator and because the generator also installed plugins um, in the cap layer, as you can see here, the CDS plugin was not there. We need to make sure it's installed. Um, and now if I run start, it should be running. Give it a minute. All right. We open our index space and voila, we see that um, the books are shown as a list. I can select one. Yeah, that's not working. Let me have a look what's happening. Oh, UI component get router is not a function. Let me have a look in my backup. Um, did not expect that, but have a backup. Let me just have a quick look. UI component. Oh yeah, sorry. This, I forgot this. Stupid mistake, but... So... Just to be sure if the dependency is okay, that should be fine. Um, so let's try again. We click on a line and it navigates to the detail page. We can, you see the URL changing, we can go back. And yeah, what now happens? I will clear my history, zoom in a little bit. Every time if I navigate, it just it's not calling O data, it's not calling XML fragment, it is um, yeah, calling the XML with the data together. So normally yeah, if the first time yeah, it gets the XML and then it gets the data, now it gets it all together. Select one, you see the second call. Yeah, it navigates to book one and it will give then the XML with the data in it. With a simple form. Voilà. And that's how the server-side rendering is working. All right, but I've, you've seen this, you might have seen this before. Um, now, at Recap and UI5 count this year, I had an interesting in conversation with Robert Eipe. Um, and we talked about AI and generating UI. So if you think about the future, it might be that yeah, maybe Joule, for example, if you need to fill in like leave request or expense or anything you need to fill in, it generates you like a UI for on the fly. 
That was something we were just discussing, but that made me think with the server-side rendering and generating a rendering, pre-rendering, or populating the data on the server-side with the XML view, why not doing this um, with the server-side rendering? And allow me to show, me, show you, I will stop this server, and I already worked on an example in, in the plugin, I have here a test system. Um, and allow me to show you, when I run this one, um, it will show me the application. So if I open it and I go to server side rendering, my index, it might take some time, but it will come through. And here behind the scene, it's basically using UI to generate, it's using AI to generate me the UI. Based on the entity, it just gets me everything and shows me here. Um, the books. Uh, currently, I cannot click on it, but that's not implemented yet. But of course, I could do this and ask to also put in like, um, yeah, when they click on an item, you need to execute that event handler. And it could do that. So just to show you. So to prove it um, again, I will refresh the page. You will see content. It takes a bit longer, but eventually it comes through. And yeah, it generates me basically the HTML. So, like here we had those book details and list. We don't need those anymore because what I do now in the plugin, and that's a new update, but it's not not the public, it's just an ID, a concept. I have here um, the place where we normally um, yeah get the, the the view and replace the data. I just create a prompt and I ask, um, yeah, I'm using Anthropic API. I'm just asking, generate me an XML view that shows a list of entity set, of the entity set with the name of the entity, with the properties, all the properties, using handlebar syntax, each for looping over the list entity and show the properties for each entity, concatenate in the description of the standard list item. Do not add controller name, to it only return code as plain text, not read between XML codes. Just by sending that, it gives me back, yeah, as you can see, it prints it out. The XML. And yeah, okay, it's just now in this example static, but this could allow us to, yeah, I don't know, if you bring parts of UI5 into, into CAP, and then start generating the views. I think this opens a lot of possibilities and just an ID and yeah, service side rendering makes this possible to bring this to the backend. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, this is just a fun project for me and shows some capabilities what AI can do for us. Um, now at the moment, generating views, maybe in the future generating full applications. That's it, that's what I wanted to share. Feel free to use the plugins um, and look at server-side rendering and maybe, yeah, try to use the AI. Thank, thank you for watching. <laughs>